Hey folks, welcome to the Coast of Moise podcast. This is episode number 62, Fred Salinas and Erica Broussard. Great conversation, had a really good time, it was all about art and photography. Uh, we branched off from other things, different streams of consciousness, talked a little bit pol- political things, religious stuff, just technology and, and society, the whole, the whole deal. But it all comes back around, we bring it back, we come to art and photography and just creating things and the artist's role in, in society and all that, so... Really fun conversation. Uh, I've had Fred on before and really cool guy, a uh, great photographer. And Jerrica, who I just met last night, um, also very cool. I mean, we talked for probably an hour and a half just hanging out and and just talking about really interesting things. And I'm sure there will be future episodes where you'll, you'll catch a little bit more of that. Um, so yeah, we'll go ahead and get right into this. Uh, episode number 62 of the Coastal Noise Podcast. Fred Salinas and Jerrica Broussard. Good combo. So technology has its place. I feel like, you know, it can be abused as just as much as anything. You know, uh-huh. we can get wrapped up in it. Yeah. And that has repercussions like taking away from the creative mind. Right. You know, getting us further away from art and yeah. things like that. But um, at the same time, I do, I do believe technology is a tool and it's a resource that helps us evolve. Um but it, it's also a matter of, are you evolving too quickly? You know, are you getting too, too much too quickly, uh, for your own, for your own good? Right. And then are you forgetting about other aspects of life that are important to keep you balanced? Like being present. Yeah. Everything's a hologram anyway. True. Optical illusion. I mean, we could be in a, in a virtual reality simulator already, you know, it could have already been like all the, the craze about VR and, and headspace stuff coming into play and that's what happens when you sleep yeah i mean how, how do we know we're not in a dream already i mean there's it's real rigid trying to define what's reality and what's there's no know. sleep in dreams but you're always awake i don't know it's the way we de- define the dream world too based on our existence in, in this my reality. dreams are very very vivid and real like yeah. i've had dreams where like i wake up and i think i'm still in the dream mm. i mean it's like that's stupid well, let me l- let me tie that in with with art here for a second mm, do you guys cool. use do you guys use your dreams to create art does it help you with photography getting an idea for photography or does it help you do something as far as visual arts does it help it bring it more it more into your your waking life in any way i would say yes yeah uh-huh i would think um some of the dreams that I've had an experience, like recently, I'll give you an example, two weeks ago, I had a dream that I picked a four-leaf clover, Mm -hmm. and then ever since I picked that that clover and that dream happened, I felt like it was a vision of some point, and I felt it was telling me something. And right after that, it's just like flows of abundance started coming right after that, you know, like just lucky things, like that was just out of nowhere. And um, today, I was actually driving, and I was like, you know, I would like to do a piece of art symbolizing this experience, you know, um, with the clover in it and maybe even put a real full of clover in it, mm-hmm. you know, into the piece of art to, um, portray that luckiness. So whoever bought it, it would give them a piece of luck, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Um, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, well, actually, no, I've thought about it. I just haven't gotten around to, um, it was actually one of the questions, one of the answers to my questions that I got earlier. You yeah. Know? Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I, uh, I've thought about it, you know, and thought about just cause I'm like, like I said, my dreams are pretty vivid and crazy. I just haven't really gotten to it. Yeah. I just, I just feel like it'd be really, really time consuming. I'd spend a lot of time on this one piece. Yeah. I just put it together. You know, I gotta go take pictures of everything that I want mm-hmm. or I could just, you know, buy it on the internet, but I'd rather do it all custom. <laughs> I messed around with the, I don't know. I was like, uh, the, I put the white, the lighthouse in some sand one day because I had that dream. You put it in sand? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It was really terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it was like my first shot at it. I was like, man, I'm done. Yeah, but it was like down the pier. It's like the the lighthouse pier, somewhere like that. Mm-hmm. Nothing there's, really compelling over it. Yeah, but I think there's a pain. That any local, like anybody local to this kind of stuff around here gets a small, like little ping, like anytime they go to take a shot of like a lighthouse or like a sunset or a pelican or something like that, you know, because they're like the, 
the standard things, Mm -hmm. you know, but yeah, but at the same time, you, you really can't take away from in moment beauty. Like even if it's, I mean, if that's what you're into and if, if you capture a really special moment in that moment, or it means something to you, you know, and you want to share it around, you know, there's nothing wrong with it, but people do attack that. You know, I'll see that online a lot Hmm. where people will, will post a a sunset and, Hmm. you know, people will shit on it because what do you, you know, know. everybody loves sunsets and it's funny because me and my buddy, intentionally just being terrible trolls <clears throat> and i can't call him out but if he actually listens to this podcast he'll start laughing right now but um yeah we were giving people crap on you know the mississippi gulf coast photography club because there's a bunch of sunsets <laughs> yeah i mean and like a bunch of like it was plantations cut- with mm-hmm. trees and all that stuff. That's same one yeah um but like there wasn't like you know it was blue hair and it wasn't pl- it wasn't pelicans but the whole purpose behind it was like, okay, everybody's doing this. Like, do something different. Like, don't right. don't just continue to see the same thing over see, and over. Yeah, like, I mean, I used to not do sunsets, and now I find myself doing them just because I don't know because I just do them like because they're easy. I mean, I mean, the, the the difficulty behind doing that landscape stuff is actually getting into the car and going. And then sometimes you go and you spend all this money on gas and you're just like, you drive all the way to Waveland and it's like, huh, well, it just fell flat. And so that's where the difficulty I think is behind that because everything, I mean, it's just, I mean, you can't, I mean, you see the sunsets here. It's pretty hard not to make those ugly. Yeah. I mean, it's like beauty, like, like, wow, like this is, I mean, and every day it's completely different and, you know, I don't know. It's kind of relaxing, I guess. Mm-hmm. I go out there by myself, you know, listen to the ocean. Yeah. Connect. Walk on the beach. Mm-hmm. I met I met, a, uh, met a man that was a photographer from Las Vegas out there one day. He yeah. had a good story. Yeah, won't go into that story, but it was pretty interesting. His <clears throat> years in Las Vegas back in the day, like the eighties and stuff. And the Do a lot of wild there. stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty insane. I was like, wow. Never would have thought. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And now you're here taking yep. a picture of the sunset. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's crazy. He was real old. Yeah. I met a guy in Nashville last week who was uh, just a keyboard player and he just played on the pedestrian bridge. Mm -hmm. And I was just asking him questions and he was a pretty young guy and he was like just trying to make it like playing music and, uh, you know, doing simple stuff just uh, out on the streets and trying to work his way up. And he said his goal was to try to get out to Las Vegas because he heard rumors out there. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, what are the rumors? And he was like, bro. And he told me like figures Mm -hmm. and he's like, just playing on the street, you know, for a couple hours a day or whatever. And he's like, you've got this big, tons of people there. They're out in the streets all year round. It's constantly a new stream, a new crowd of people. So it's this revolving door of just, you know, all right. So so we, uh, I exchanged some contact info. I was like, you know, never hurts to have more people, you know, in your network of like, let me know, you know, let me know how it is out there. If you get out that way, you know, you never know when that person's going to cross your path again. Mm -hmm. Like it's crazy how everybody's kind of connected. Yeah. We're seeing now more than ever that our world is incredibly small. Yeah. You know, and, and I hope that's what it gets to, you know, we need to see that the rest of the world is very similar to us and all that, not all that distant and that borders and regulations and all that. Those are, those are, they're not real. I mean, we right. put up fences and things like that. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's a separation. It's through collective agreement that we're going to enforce and say that these structures or these, these land boundaries are it's this state, it's that state, it's this country or whatever. Mm -hmm. And like these people can't, you know, come to it or like, you know, whatever. Right. Or or whatever. But it's about connecting the bridges and bringing everyone together. Yeah. And hopefully, you know, through this, the world getting smaller and information being readily available and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, hopefully we'll move, move to that. But, uh, but we can't forget about the arts, y'all. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask y'all what what your workflow is like. Um, which, Jerica, I'll, I'll turn it to you. Do you have like a workflow? Is there something like a series of like routines or patterns that you engage in uh, as far as your creating process goes? Um, yes, I'd say so. Um, I actually pray before I paint. You're big into that. You you yes. you want to give respect to everything before you dive into it. You right. Correct. Acknowledge it. Yep. So I do that. I'm really into um here recently is I feel like I've been blossoming and um I'm into prophetic art or you could call it visionary art. 
and it's where you get out the way, you let God flow through you, and then you can prophesize the message that shows up. So there's like a lot of abstract process and not um, so controlled, Mm -hmm. which I've always been a very controlled artist. So it's like releasing that and going into this more abstract, free flowing form um, is really rewarding because it's like these messages will literally pop through like... um, I was throwing around a spray can and um, just real loosely. And next thing you know, there's a butterfly that appeared there. And I had no intention of putting it there. So it's really cool to kind of let it build itself and say what it really wants to say, you know, Mm -hmm. the piece of art. Yeah. Um, These ones that I'm creating currently um, are to spread messages to the collective consciousness. Um, Just about healing really um i'm making these to heal myself so for them to be put in someone's uh someone's home for that same purpose um is really rewarding you know for Mm -hmm. me i guess you could say Mm -hmm. um i feel like it's part of my life purpose i feel like i'm going to reach people with my art Um, like I'm doing a mural in downtown Gulfport next this week, actually I'll be starting and the mural is about, um, accepting the waves of pain that come to us in promising cycles. And it's actually an optical illusion with a monk praying in the corner. And the illusion is the waves of pain because the waves of pain are actually teachers. And if you can get to a conscious state of accepting the waves of pain and seeing them for the opportunity of healing that they're actually presenting versus being the victim and stuck in that wave, you know, you kind of have to view it from a godlike uh, perspective. Mm-hmm. And um, so that's pretty much what my mural's about. And it's funny because I got, um, I had started previously and gotten a hiccup about it. And I got, um, it was like the waves of pain started for me right when that happened. So it was really interesting because it was like I had to experience what I was portraying in the painting. So I feel like it's very powerful, you know. Um, spirit moves through artists, you know, we're, we're channels of, I don't know how to put it. It's like, um, we, there's a new art movement going on right now. And I feel like we're at the head of it. And it's this prophetic art. Um, because we, as the artists actually can change the future because we're taking these visions or channels of, you know, love and healing and light and actually placing it in the physical. So then it can then catch up and form right behind it. You know, it's like, um, um, changing the counterculture is what it is. And you can see it in a lot of art history, like, um, the raping of the sirens back in the Renaissance period. Like you see it where the, um, men are like snatching these women and they're just, you know, they're naked. The women are, and they're just completely victims and just being like, just raped in these scenes. And as the artists start to change the art and the women become like over a few, you know, years, like the women start to become heavier in the paintings. And then as they evolve, they get heavier and thicker. And then the the men aren't carrying them and snatching them anymore. And then you get towards the end of it. And the woman's actually standing there in the middle of this war with no one's hands on her, like this powerful, strong woman. So with that evolution of art and like that sense, it gave women, you know, their rights and to not be sold as property and so if we can put this type of art out there with these healing states of evolving consciousness then you know it changes the counterculture mm. and do you do you think that's a big part of what the artist's role is in society most definitely most definitely you know because art carries a very strong vibration um especially for me like when you have intention or prayer in it you know like my intention is for love and for healing and being aware of that and letting god flow through me to create that is uh, really powerful it's really really powerful mm. what about you fred what's your typical kind of workflow <laughs> Um, um, I usually just do some research first on, you know, what the particular subject is, you know, kind of see what everybody else is kind of doing. So I get a good frame, frame of mind of like, okay, so this is your average, not yet average. Um, this is your like typical, like, I don't know, nightclub shoot or whatever. 
<clears throat> and then you just kind of like recreate it. And then, um, you know, just being prepared for everything um, that comes your way, I guess. Because I do a lot of like live stuff. So, I mean, once I'm there, I'm there. You know, there's no stopping. It's just going, going, going. So, yeah. Just, trying to recapture yeah. the moment mm -hmm. as it's happening there. Yep. And then getting home, like workflow wise, I'm trying to get better about coming home and directly depositing my SD card into my iMac mm -hmm. and downloading all the photos right then and there and getting it done quick. Um, but, you know, just trying to get it done as soon as possible. I've been really good at getting it done within one or two days, yeah. you know, because I feel that if I continue to leave it on my desktop or in an unfinished state, um, I'll get bored. Mm -hmm. And once I start getting bored, then it makes it really, really hard for me to start working on stuff and feeling, I guess, uninspired in a way. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know what it is, but I just got to hurry up and get it, get it done. I guess maybe like, uh, you know, it's sort of like, I mean, it's instant gratification really, I guess. I don't know in a way. I mean, something quick. I mean, it's for just flashes of memory, you know? I mean, for me, I can always like remember when I took, now that I don't drink anymore, <laughs> I can like remember like certain shots in my brain, you know? And I mean, it's just pretty much just being prepared and getting it done, you know, yeah. doing your research, you know, cause I mean, if you're going to go shoot a band and you don't know what they're doing on stage, then, you know, because they're performers, you know, or whatever, you know, people speaking, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, that's not fun, but you just have to do it sometimes, get money, you know, but if they've done a few speeches, you know, that they face, you know, a certain way all the time. So why are you going to waste your time and sit on the left? You know, you can get everything done more efficiently and faster if you stay prepared i mean i'm not like i don't con really consider myself an artist so much as kind of a um photography is an extension of my career yeah. as far as like being social media manager type person digital yeah. ma digital marketing type um i mean i, I don't know I guess I, I could be an artist if I wanted to. You're a very, very talented artist. Is I mean, what you are. I don't know. I, can't, I'm I, mean, I guess. Some beautiful stuff. I mean, I don't... I mean, but, you know, is it... I mean, I'm just taking a pic, like, for instance, a sunset. Does that make me an artist? Because I went and I cranked up the colors, you know, like, of the sunset. I mean, because I cranked them up a certain amount, you know, like this percentage. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't crank them up the same percentage all the time. I mean, everything's like... <sighs> Everything's different, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, every like every photo is different, so you have to adjust for it. Yeah. I batch edit, too. It's just part of my workflow. Mm. Like, you batch edit, like, 600 photos, and then you kind of... And I've also started creating presets. So, like, because I do a lot of the same venues, you know? So, it's like, I have these presets. Like, okay, so I was in, you know... I was at the grocery because I've been there a lot, it seems like. And I've been at the Great Grand Mobile. I have, like, presets of, like, grocery... You know, grocery red light, grocery blue light, grocery green light, because that's their their rotation. Same thing with a brickyard. You know, it's brickyard blue light. You know, the the rotation of the lights inside just like, and it just makes it to where I can. I mean, I individually tweak them, but it's just a good baseline. You know, to mess with the lights because the lighting is really ridiculous in those venues. Yeah. Um, <coughs> preparedness. Preparedness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you pull that mic up a little bit closer? I can maybe move up yeah. instead of like leaning back. Yeah. I'm just trying Gangster to get a, lean. Get, trying to get a better read on you. How do, so how do you know um, when when a good time to use different lighting reflectors, um, you know, video light, natural light, all those kind of... I mean, I know lighting plays a huge factor in it uh, if you want to start rambling on that. And if... Uh, would you guys be cold if I dropped the air one or two degrees? Mm, it's fine. Okay. I'm going to drop a little bit. Um, so, the lighting. It's funny because I don't use... Um, I really don't use it at all. Really? <laughs> no, not really. I mean, I just don't have it. I mean, I, well, I have like two, two lights, two constant lights. But I don't have like lighting. I have, I have, some, I have a flash or a camera flash. So, you do that all natural? Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much. Like, because I, I started photographing um, at the shed. And the lighting there is not good either. And so... I had to compensate. Um, so I learned to, you know, being around bars and stuff, like just photograph. the light you got. But yeah, exactly. And then, um, <clears throat> um, you know, so as far as like use lighting wise for, I use reflectors. I actually use like, it's a piece of AC vent or whatever. I don't know what it is. 
you buy it at Lowe's for like 14 bucks a sheet or something. It's this massive piece, but I, you cut it up. But I'll use it for um, like food photography. You know, you set up one light on the left, like or the right, whatever, and then you reflect that light off. You know, so it kind of kills the shadows a little bit softer. Hmm. You know, I'll use that. You know, flash I use to like create motion in pictures. Um, versus, like, I don't do a portrait tree very often, so I can't get into that. That's one of those things I'm trying to learn. I was going to ask what's something in the realm of photography that you're, you're poor, poor, I can't even say the word, right? Portraits. Yeah. Um, I have trouble spelling it. If it makes por, you feel por, better. Por, yeah, no <laughs> por, tri, 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 tri. There's too many like T's. I think it's just a word that gets everybody yeah, in some way, shape or form. Portraiture. <laughs> receive gets me all the time on emails. Receive. Right. It's yeah. always underlined in red. <laughs> <laughs> I before E, except what, whatever. I don't know the rule. Yeah. I know, right? But uh, portraits. Yeah. I think mainly portraits because uh, money, money's in it. Um, so that and you can like really like I want to do like that's where I would guess start you know getting the artistic stuff like really like like really good portrait not just you know like a concept behind it not you know just a headshot you know mm -hmm. I mean but I mean I don't know if you're Portraits. invisible for one day anywhere in the world huh yeah anywhere in the world you got a camera and you can just you could be just invisible. be be amongst the people or or whatever, anywhere in nature, just undisturbed. Oh, that's pretty crazy. Um, I don't know. I mean, there could be there, um, two sides of the coin. You know, happy place and dark places. Um, I don't know. Like maybe. I mean, probably like getting into people's lives, like kind of just like. You know, the everyday, the happinesses and sadnesses, you know, they go through like people's lives, you know, like, you know, really capturing those intimate moments when like, you know, the person that you've loved your entire life is finally like laying on their deathbed. And, you know, it's just, you know, that one like special, yeah, that one special moment where it's just you and that person and whatever they say to that person, you know, and you're there, you know, and then. I mean, the same thing, like, I mean, just something like, I don't know, there's so many things, but yeah, just really getting, to, I would say, yeah, just being a fly on the wall, pretty much fly on the wall in people's homes, kind of like not in the bathtub or anything, you know, none of that. Mm -hmm. but who knows, maybe, I mean, I don't know, you can get down like that, I don't know, it'd be interesting, I don't know. I think they're, like, it would be cool to catch those, those moments in people's lives that aren't normally experienced by, like, when they're just by themselves and they have a feeling that overcomes mm -hmm. them, yeah. like, maybe in a, a thought of grief or just confusion about yeah. what path to take in life, exactly. and if you can get them in that exact moment when it's its most intense, maybe. Mm -hmm. And the most vulnerable. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. that's when art really speaks to you the most yes. is when you yeah. can you know it, and it's a combination of the expression of the person it's the combination of you know is the sun out or the clouds out what colors did the artist choose to convey Symbolism. the out the atmosphere of it you know and then you know as an artist you can put uh what what they might call easter eggs you know i don't know what what you but like that's the reference i know from like video <laughs> games. Mini games easter egg yeah yeah easter egging so like you could put things that are like um i don't know maybe something only a group of people might understand you know or catch yeah so. i don't know what you're saying i've thought about doing that mm -hmm. kind of like references to so would it be like hidden symbols is that mm -hmm. what you're saying it could be yeah anything that like it's something like an easter egg is something you got to look for right so right. it's something that you don't notice in the grand scheme of mm -hmm. the picture or whatever but you know if you look down by their foot they've got a there's a four leaf clover or a five leaf clover and right. i don't know you know maybe that's something special to the artist or something the artist's family if it's dedicated to a certain person you know, yeah just tie little things in yeah you know like if i was a movie director i would like put references or or have memorabilia from like another great director that i that had huge right. respect for you know things like that yeah definitely. and then other people see it like and then relics yeah yeah the and then it, it creates a subgroup of people that come to 
love and respect what it is you do because you went through the 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 trouble of, of putting it in there knowing what it is putting it in there and then doing it so subtly that you don't ask for attention or or anything right. from it. you know it's just there yes you know and then people see it and they go i can't believe they put that in the painting i can't <laughs> believe he put that in the movie yeah uh, like i was just thinking about fight club the mm-hmm. other day which speaking of brad pitt um i was reading the assassination of jesse james by the coward robert ford mm-hmm. and um i just picked up the movie from the library because the the book's good and and i've seen the movie before and it's great um but in fight club there's so many i found this website um or maybe my friend sent it to me but it was like just all the hidden things in fight club um like things written on the wall that like it's just i love i love me like three times in reference to the character being multiple people at once or like he's walking down a hallway and there's a mirror and in the shot he can you can see the girl he's pulling but you can't see him he's not in it. it's like this weird trick of thing and you know and you just never see it you know so people after a while you know it could be years after you know an artist is dead or a movie's been released and then somebody notices that and then it inspires them so much at least it does for me to go how do you do that trick or um, who is this person that you're referencing you know in this little subtle way right. and they get inspired by that and they go and they find out more and it furthers their knowledge and it makes them want to create and all that kind of stuff love that um, yeah it's love great that. you know yep they were just found one with punch out what's that the uh, Mike Tyson's punch out on Easter egg what's that you remember Mike Tyson's punch out uh it might have been a little bit probably yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah showing my age here <laughs> no um, <clears throat> no but, I was an NES that was <laughs> that was where video games came in in my life and yeah, like, yeah SNES yeah so this is before but when you're fighting Mike Tyson there is a um there's a guy that shoots a flash it takes a picture a little, little pixel flashes uh-huh. and that's when he's about to and if you if you hit the A button or the punch button, I think it's A. Yeah, A the punch button. When he flashes it, you're guaranteed to knock Mike Tyson out like every time. Oh, really? And so, and it, apparently, it was really crazy because apparently they had found all the Easter eggs already for Mike Tyson's punch out, and this one was it was a big deal because the game's been around for like 25 years, 30 years. Yeah. So it was a big deal. Um, but yeah, that's an Easter egg too. Google that's has a bunch cool. of Easter eggs. Check those out. You can make you can turn your browser yeah. upside down. Mm-hmm. If you, uh, I don't know if you ever played Star Wars, but if mm. you type in do a barrel roll, the screen yeah. will. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> there was, yeah. I love that stuff. And like Google's a, a great example mm. of that. Like their people, the people they have working for them and the way they program things, it's real like loosey goosey. And, you know, they do cool things and like how they do uh, different themes to their. Every day, it seems yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. Like, wow, y'all are yeah, they're all on stars. It. Mm-hmm. They're on it. Yeah, it's, mm-hmm. it's amazing. For sure. I think they're tied to me for like greatest company ever existed. It's not even Google anymore. It's Alphabet. Well, yeah. Yeah. So there's still Google, but it's under the umbrella of Alphabet. And I bet you it's like that because um, when the government took down Microsoft back in whatever was the 90s, because it was becoming too big of a monopoly when Apple was down. Okay, so you think Google did that to mm-hmm. avoid to kind of protect itself, probably? Because I think the more like LLCs you, have, I don't think it's an LLC, but the more like businesses you have, the more protected you are, or something maybe. Mm. But yeah, that way they can't break it apart or whatever. And BMW actually owns Alphabet.com. Huh. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, BMW. I don't know if they bought it since then, but when they first did it, BMW owned it. Really? Mm-hmm. They probably bought that. I'm sure. They got, I'm sure that, I mean, they, they got, got Google money. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, damn, Google money. Yeah. That's the greatest company to work for. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're, the, they're the government hand. They're the secret government. You think so? They know more about you than anybody. Actually, Facebook, probably, I think. That's going to happen to Facebook, too. Facebook's getting too big for its britches. I guess. Bridges. I think it's gonna. I, we're gonna have a tech CEO, and that's when things are really gonna get crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's coming soon. Yeah, like a tech for president. Mm-hmm. I think so too. And that's gonna be. Woo. That's when the internet's gonna energize. Yeah. Not that it's not energized now. Maybe that's what we need. Like, um, who was talking about it? Somebody was talking about recently about uh, electing 
presidential figures based on public figures that we love. Like Oprah was talking about it recently. She, yeah. like, yeah. she would win. She would, right? Flat and out. She, and wouldn't she, like, as, as far as a first woman president, mm-hmm. I'd, I'd I be... I think... Yeah, I was actually... Ha- I was having that conversation with you my know? mom at breakfast this morning. Yeah. About Oprah being... I mean, I, I, I would have... But, I would have a vote for Oprah, I think. I would vote Oprah's for Oprah. Oprah's tapped in. Yeah. yeah. I mean, she exactly. is. She's she out there. Soul Sunday. She's put She's put years on the TV of being her honest, true, authentic self out there. At least from what I... I'm pretty sensitive to reality oh. television and, like, mm-hmm. bullshit scripting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I... Oprah's real, <laughs> the real deal, y'all. <laughs> uh, as far as I can tell, I've always thought go so. Oprah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oprah. yeah. Go, go. Yeah. I mean, and everybody would say go Oprah, and we'd vote her in, you know? And we'd be like, take it. would be like a landslide. Part. <laughs> landslide. I mean, it would be. I mean, seriously, I think. But the problem is, it's not just us, though. Too like it's the it's the system that gets to put their input, yeah. and in some cases, has more sway than the public does mm-hmm. than civilians do. You know, so it's a matter of disrupting that. You know, we shouldn't. Uh, we probably shouldn't have one person who's the president. I think it's just a performance art thing, almost to a point. It's it's they've got this figure of a person who's going to do the role uh, that's going to represent the system. Them, you know, and take the blame and be the the target and all this kind of stuff. Like, it needs how do we not have a council? How do we not have a group of people of Neil deGrasse Tyson and Oprah and uh, you know other people that you know? Let's throw Bill Nye up there. I don't know. Like, yeah. give him the science guy. Yeah, give, <clears throat> give people. I like Bill Nye. A chance. And I think they're now starting to realize that that's the case. It's through the internet and and through media uh, and people people just being able to. To, uh, make enough money to make it happen and, and get people to back them that we might see this future coming where um, artists can be president or talk show hosts or you uh-huh. know, musicians um, I think uh, I think Mark Zuckerberg's gonna make a run yeah I've, I've also thought that he would be a guy to we need a for. young president yeah <laughs> that's what we need really I think there's too many old people I mean well, it's an old, I, it's I love a, old I love old people no old people like it's an old people. system it's an old system yeah, exactly. and old and, and older we, we people. need young fresh ideas yeah you like artists and stuff like you know like we got to break the mold too. It's like mm-hmm. this idea that, uh, speaking of Neil deGrasse Tyson, he made this recommendation. He thinks the way it should work is you want this person, or at least in this case at this stage, okay, did you want this person? Did you want this person or neither? And if, if more people vote neither, as I'm sure a restart. lot of people, yeah, you just do it again. But making it so that you have to pick one of these people, and then if you don't pick, then it's just like, oh, well, you're not credited. Like, right. you don't have any say in it, you know? Yeah. Um, which is really, uh, I, you know, I hated. I knew I was gonna kind of get it. I was in India when I, when our election went on, so I didn't vote, and I don't know that I would have. Um, but you know, if there's no option to say neither, I don't like either of these choices, and I don't think we should be here where we are. There's no option for people to say that, and then if you don't vote, people will go, "Oh well, we you know, vote. you don't have a say, so you shouldn't have a say, so, or uh, that's unpatriotic, or you're not doing your civic duty." But I'm, you're in a corner. It's like, why, you know, if you, if you feel that way, if you truly feel like there's no option for you there, but right. there's no option and there's no outlet. So I'm a lot still of, confused on the electoral votes. Like, who is I know, that? right. I've, <laughs> like, I've tried to watch some YouTube videos. I try to read about it and so like, okay, I guess, I mean, supposedly it's a balance. It's a checks and balance system and I don't know. Whatever that yeah. means. Yeah. I mean, like, I don't know. I mean, because that's part of the system that I'm trying to get away from. And, and in a way, or I would like it to be a little different. Um, and so you're asking me to go through this process, this system, you know, or trust these people to represent me and put their vote in. Uh, but how do I know? That corruption and and all that stuff isn't influencing them, which it is, which I do know, (laughs) you know, so that's uh, crazy. But it's just a matter of of slowing up the process when you when you have the, the wheel, when you're at the helm and the system's that big and it runs through so many filters, you can slow things down. You can pass a law. You can hold things up. You can go to research, uh, recess for months on end. Um, you can arrest people, you know, for, for silly things. You can kill them on the low if you've got 
you know, that kind of money and resources. For sure, you know, people have died in the past who have spoken out against the government or tried to change mm-hmm. things or whatever. Um, but now, now we have this whole quiet genocide thing, you know, we, uh, cause you, you, you can't do things like what, what the Holocaust was back in the day, you know, right. I, I don't, I don't think so. I think we're too interconnected now. I, I think yeah, I would hope not. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Nobody wants it to come. And yeah. I think that it's because yeah, it's happened and, and we're aware of it, you know, I mean, um, you can call that like Syria though. You can, you can, and that's the thing. I think governments trying to move, like when they want, they want, they if they wanted these holocausts or they wanted land or resources or just people to yeah. go away, then it becomes a matter of how can we do this to make it look like we're not doing this. Yeah. And it's by pulling resources away or equipping the other side on the low, or uh, blocking your borders off to them. It's all these things so that you can go. Well, we need a year. We need two years to figure this out, or whatever. Uh, and then meanwhile those people are just dying by tens of thousands and then you can go two years later all right well we got it figured out we're going to open it up well millions of people are dead now and displaced and like war has been turned you know but i'm not saying that i I know any of the answers i don't know i can't we just need to mind our own business Maybe, gonna, maybe, gonna, but the problem is, is like people don't let you mind your business. You I know. know people want to come over and we just um, need to. And people, there's religions that are that want to inflict damage. It's just it's too messy. Like we've got to get sooner. Too many to, closed-minded people. Uh, yeah, we and we're people are so set in their ways. They're like oh, unwilling our, to to freaking work things out. We're fighting our brothers and sisters. Yeah, what we're pretty doing, much. It's you know? crazy. But can we, let's talk about art and photography and. Instead of politics, I rode that Trump train. That's right. <laughs> oh yeah, choo choo, baby. It's, it's gonna be interesting. Trump train. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh, he's gonna be held accountable for all that stupid shit. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Anyways, um, what would you say the hardest part about being an artist is? The hustle. For sure. Like having to work hard, like, especially if you're trying to do it for real. Yeah. Like, we'll describe that hustle. Cause there's a lot of factors into it, you know, from a finance standpoint, from a motivational standpoint, it's just, uh, getting up every day and, um, you know, just trying to do something involved with like your personal business, your photography, like for me, my photography type stuff, trying to do something that's photography related, you know, um, every single day you know whether it's you know throwing something up on instagram or you know organizing my catalog that kind of stuff and then you know kind of like prospecting out um i do a lot of referral stuff so i don't do much prospecting but um i mean yeah the hustle like being able to like say hey i really 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 need to go get up some content because i haven't done anything recently and i think in this day and age everybody having a camera and a phone and everything you have to stay on top of it so you know just forcing yourself to like get up and go take a picture of that sunrise because there was a crazy storm last night and the clouds are going to be awesome mm-hmm. you know it's this the difference between you know it's the people that get up at six o'clock in the morning you know and get that amazing sunrise it's never going to be there again you know versus the people that slept in you know i mean you know, it's the difference between the people going out and getting the job versus the people sitting back and like waiting on referrals. Mm-hmm. You know, like yeah. I had my buddy tell me, you know, it's like, you know, if I went and went and, you know, promoted myself a little bit more, you know, I could easily be making six figures, which is amazing for a photographer. And, um, he's doing pretty well, you know, with referrals, but you know, it's that difference. It's like, it's pretty much for me, it would be like cutting the freaking cord and just saying, I'm not going to work on anything else. I'm not going to make any money doing anything else except for photography. I don't think that I'm ready to jump off the, off the side of the building and to say free fall mode and yeah. try to, um, maintain the lifestyle that I'm maintaining now. But you know, sometimes scary to think about. I, I mean, know you think about it, you know, but the reward of it, if you could pull it off, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, that's the hustle. I mean, I got some stuff, you know, lined up that could potentially, you know, it's just, you know, continuing to, you know, I guess we'll walk down that road or run down that road in my case sometimes, you know, and mm-hmm. 
you know, so we'll, we'll see, you know, I mean, it depends on how hard you hustle sometimes, I guess. Mm -hmm. I mean, that always depends on how hard you hustle, what I'm saying. Yeah. But there's also a mentality too to it, right? Like you you want to approach it like you were saying, maybe you have the option sometimes to run or walk there. Yeah. And then sometimes you got to wonder like, well, is there a way that I'm supposed to approach yeah, it? You yeah. Know? You don't want to get yourself in a situation where it's like, okay, so, so this is awesome. I just hooked this freaking gig for $10,000. That's a whole hell of a lot of money. I mean, I have never hooked a $10,000 gig in my entire life. Never. But I will. Um, and, uh, you know, it's like, for me, like, I'm not ready to take on a, you know, like, I don't think a $10,000. Well, it depends. Depends oh, on what ready. it is. No, but I don't have, like, I don't have the gear for it. I mean, oh. I mean, I could make it happen, but probably just rent, just get the It'll deposit and out. rent it all out. But, like, ten. I mean, that's like, you know... Like, that's like, I think for me, like having like a real, like professional photographer, you know, that's like, like that's their whole life. That's what mm -hmm. they do. You know, like, okay. So you're like, I got hired by Nike to do a shoot. Really? I mean, can I handle a Nike shoot right now? Probably not. I don't think. Whatever. You I don't, I will. I, I don't man. have, I don't have the. I don't feel that I don't have the experience. Like I don't, I've never been in, in that situation. So I'd walk into a room and be like. What's all this? You know, how am I using these strobes properly? Like, cause I don't want to put it like that kind of stuff. It's like, if you get out there and you put that, you know, yeah. Okay. Let's say you don't rock that shoot. That's a $10,000 that that client's going to be pissed off about. And you, and then your reputation just sinks. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a growing, I think you grow into, into your positions. You know, you can't be yeah. a, a early budding photographer. I oh, just, man, I see some, oh my goodness. Uh, like people that actually I feel like ripping people off like shitty Photoshop on photos like I was looking at this photo and this person's portfolio and I mean I was like in shock like how did this person manage to get that friggin flare in exactly the same spot on exactly the same photo for 10 different people I mean I know it was freaking shitty Photoshop like I'm a fan of but with presets and stuff like that, like, you know, good baselines, but this person is paying you a good amount of money and you're like doing the same thing that you did for this other person over here. It's like freaking Walmart, you mm -hmm. know, like to me, it's like everyone, it's, it's a different situation. You can't like, to, to me, it's just being cheap and cheating. Mm-hmm. I mean, and, and you and see you it all, wonder, and you wonder how they can, they, yeah. And how, how, like, how can you like kind of sleep at night? I mean, I mean, and it sounds so crazy, but in my mind, like I freak out about stuff. Like if it's not like, if it's not the way I want it, you know, like, you know, most of the time the people are like, Oh, we love it. It's so great. Blah, 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 blah. But in my brain, I'm like, really like, that's oh, it's so messed up. Look at that right there. Like, I mean, like you don't see that, you know, like little thing right there that I've obsessed about for like 10 minutes. Yeah. You know, but I don't know, just like being prepared and stuff. Like you see it all the time now because everybody has a camera, you know, and people get like, like the other day there's somebody who's complaining on Facebook that, you know, that they had, a, they hadn't received their pictures and all this other stuff. And it's like, you know, and this person was like a budding young photographer. It's like, you know, like, I mean, you got to grow into it, I think, to get to. You know, Michelangelo didn't paint the Sistine Chapel because he was the guy on the side of the street. Mm -hmm. He created that reputation, you know, and it was there. So, yeah, like when I'm doing $10,000 jobs, yeah, I'll know how to use reflectors really good. I'll use them really good, you know, real country. <laughs> but, you know, learn how to use like, you know, there's certain things. I just I don't feel like I'm there yet, mm -hmm. you know, but I'm getting there. But, yeah, like reflectors, yeah. lighting, strobes. That's on my list of things to buy this year is strobe and lighting so I can get really, really creative with lighting. I think mm -hmm. it's amazing. Yeah. I mean, flashes are just, you can do so much with shadows and yeah, add that extra dimension to pictures. Yeah. That last podcast we did when we went out, you know, back and mm -hmm. just did stuff afterwards. It was a lot of fun. And yeah. like, that's, that's stuff to me that's out of my realm of photography, yeah. but I think it's really cool, you know? Yeah. I haven't done it anymore since really. I kind of, I actually, I take that back. Last night I was listening to this band practice and it's going to be amazing. Scooby, check them out. I'm going to be at the grocery. 
Um, but uh, they'll be at the grocery on the 11th. Oh, for St. Patrick's Day actually is their first gig. But anyway, I went to their house, to their band house to practice. I took some pictures outside, some long exposures and stuff. Mm. You know, that was the last time. Like light painting, like that's one of those things. Like you got to be disciplined, you know. Yeah. To get up and go outside at two o'clock in the morning and play with some. You know, like finding content and stuff, like finding cool things to shoot. You know. Mm-hmm. I want to start getting more into like props and stuff. Like, like I really want to do some really cool portraits. Mm-hmm. Like artistic type weird like I got I got a project in my brain that's just kind of I'm on the fence about you know mm -hmm. it's kind of one of those projects that's just got to put shit out there mm -hmm. it's kind of like mm, I don't know if I uh, but I think it'd be profound you know and really just kind of want to see like you know, like I want that project to like, when people go home, they are sitting there evaluating their lives, you know, where they are at in their lives. <clears throat> so we'll see. It might come this year, next year. It yeah. might come in 50 years. I just haven't, you know, it might come after a spiritual journey. You know, maybe that's mm -hmm. what I need to unlock the, mm -hmm. unlock it. But yeah. Yeah. Things like that. And, uh, things like what you were talking about earlier about a person who just produces a piece of work and just sells it as is, whereas you might freak out about a little detail or something like that. Um, Stephen Pressfield who wrote the, uh, the war of art, he would say that's the difference between like, you know, a hobbyist and a professional, Yeah. you know, um, granted the hobbyist can hustle and make them make themselves as marketable as, as anybody else, you know? And, uh, but that's an important part of, of being an artist is saying, you know, maybe I'll do it next month or maybe I'll do it next year, or maybe 50 years down the road, you know, always having the mentality that you're going to keep going and keep doing and involve as a person, as an artist, you know, is huge. Um, you know, what, um, like for, as far as visual stuff, how do you feel like you grow? Like what's, what steps do you take to further yourself, you know, and find new angles to, to something that to me is very difficult working with your hands and taking something from your own mind and bringing it into a picture as opposed to what me or Fred might do of just, you know, taking, do photography stuff. Do you do, and let me ask as a side question for, do you do photography stuff related stuff? Or um, I've dabbled in kind it. Of dabble in uh -huh. it. Okay. But I don't really do it. Okay. So so the original question, how do you, how do you kind of, how do you grow, you know? How do you expand upon yourself and find new avenues to make that that translation from the mind to the hands to the canvas or, or the sculpture or whatever it is that you're doing? Oh, let's see. <clears throat> it's a loaded question. It is, right? Because in a way, it's kind of going back to just growing, right? Right. Keeping and at I'm it. Trying and, to and like break that down. Yeah, yeah. Branching out and finding new things to experiment with. And being is, open. Yeah. For, to me, I think one of my biggest lessons of just to be very open to what comes to you and how it comes to you and when, you know, and to not be shut it down right away. Like for me, for instance, like I've never been inspired to do coast theme art before. And I was like, y'all were talking about earlier, one of those people, like someone mm -hmm. would come up to me and be like, I got a great idea. You make a million dollars. I'm like, Oh yeah. What is it? They're like, you should paint a crab. And I'm like, Oh my God. Yeah. You know, like no crabs over here. Sorry. And then all of a sudden, I felt like my spirituality started lining up with my art and it just started flowing so naturally and beautifully. And it was like I was even being gifted these things to like put on these pieces. So like, for instance, I had a friend down the street and this is how I got inspired to do coast art. He, um, he was like, come on, Jay Love, I'm taking you on the boat to go scavenging. I said, OK, my little country friend he's precious. And I filled up a five gallon bucket of all these different fish bones, like a crab body, speaking of. And I thought I had a barracuda skull at the time. And I was like, yeah, some dude's gonna love this. I got a you know, really awesome manly fish and it ended up being a needlefish. I'm like, how puny. It went from a barracuda to a needlefish, but that's okay. And then, um, so I collected all these different um, animal relics. And the next thing you know, they just, I was super inspired because I'm like, oh, dead bodies are involved. I'm feeling it now, you know? So I'm like, okay, let's just get to sculpting these things. And um, yeah, so then I just really got into co-start and it's funny with the synchronicities and 
how, like I was saying, how it lined up with my spirituality. So I get um, these fish bones and then all of a sudden I'm inspired to do Coast Art. And then two weeks later, I get selected to do this mural in downtown Gulfport. And would you know the alley's called Fishbone Alley? So it's like, I collected these bones, I get the, so it's kind of like the path starts to unfold and I just feel really guided of where mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be and kind of what message I'm supposed to portray. And I would say through my growth as an artist, the growth actually comes through the pain, you know, because that's that opportunity for ascension is through the pain. So it's like, I start to create these things sometimes and not even knowing what they mean. And then through some sort of pain I had this ascension process and then it clicks to what this piece of art meant mm -hmm. and I'm like wow that is so powerful mm -hmm. so I would say that's probably how I would yeah. grow yeah and it's kind of knowing how to handle failure and and yes. moving past it and, and being able to accept failure or accept um, rough criticism because it's still coming at you and it's to be open from that and a lot of times I feel like things I'll give a suggestion say if you're moving into an apartment and you're like oh this lady was so hateful on the phone well that's those are guiding you so that mm -hmm. just meant that that wasn't the place for you to live there's something better and that was just a say a brick in the path but it puts you to the right or to the left on the path you're truly supposed to be on so mm -hmm. getting in that space to where you can accept the pain and accept the negativity or whatever because really it's driving you towards the positivity mm -hmm. yeah and you see people get wrapped up and and, and hung up on the on that fork in the road and, and wondering why is this happening to me or yeah. uh, really amplifying why it seems bad, you know, as opposed yeah. to taking it as a learning experience like you're suggesting. Yeah. And to trust yourself, I think has been a big growth for me because it's like, you know, you have these doubts. It's like, I know my life purpose is to create, create a space of healing because I am a creator. I can do that. And I can do that, especially through my artwork and reach the community, you know, and um, sorry, I forgot where I was going with that. It was really good though. <laughs> right. You go on the tangent and then you yeah, start oh, rolling. Where did it go? Yeah, start where rolling. did it go? Come back. <laughs> yeah. But, um, what was the, what were we talking about? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like completely gone. Oh, um, that's a thing. Like this is a side effect of being in the moment of it. You Man, know, you just in the flowing. moment. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, th those, those, uh, bone pieces are pretty sweet though. Thank oh, you. Oh, they're pretty friggin' amazing looking actually. And how long are you going to be working on that mural or, or, or in general fishbone alley for that particular project? I'm saying probably a straight four days. It'll take me to get this mural up. And then, um, um, the community is so great. I just love being involved with the community and the directors and the, you know, over main street and just all these people. Cause they're so forward thinking and so forward moving and just really, excuse my language, but they're badasses. And I'm mm -hmm. like, yes, I mean, y'all are making moves in this place, you know, and they're putting color up. And, um, so just to be involved around like, you know, the city officials, but not even that it's like the people down in the alley, there's this community there. It's like you, I was hanging out down there. I've been hanging out down there a lot. And I, I had started the mural previously and now I'm doing it again. But in that, that time that I've been down there, I've gotten to see the people that work at the restaurants because they come towards the back of the alley to smoke or to take a break or to what, use a phone call. And then you got your homeless population that come through there. And then you got your people coming in taking pictures. And then, so there's all these different varieties of people walking through this one alleyway but what's so beautiful is getting to witness the community and the energy exchange between the people like for instance there's this one guy that works at one of the restaurants and um he you know they come out the back door and stuff and then there's this one little homeless homeless guy which i have a soft spot in my heart for the homeless but besides that um he's real quiet he doesn't bother me you know he's just he doesn't even stare you know he's just very to himself and he's very quiet and he said he was sitting on the bench next day right under the scissor lift i was on and he was just sitting there and the one of the little guys out the restaurant comes out the back has a plate of food for him gives him the plate of food don't say a word sits across goes back across the alley and sits on a crate and smokes a cigarette and then he goes back inside and then i found that that was his routine that he did that 
um, you know, every day. And one day I walked up to him. I was like, you know, it's really beautiful what you do for that man. And he said, you know, if I was in that situation, I wish somebody would do it for me. So just getting to witness the community caring for one another and picking each other up, no matter what, what walk of life it is from the officials to the homeless people is really, really beautiful. And I love having my hand in that. Mm hmm. It's fun to be a part of. Yes. And kind of get it, get it from all angles. Yes. Yeah. That is cool. Um, I wanted to ask you guys, uh, what's some of the best advice that you've ever had, uh, about being more creative? Uh, um, <clears throat> I don't know be, about being more creative, being more creative or anything that, um, helps you, helped you along in your art form, helped you, gave you something to think about, resonated with you. Um, maybe put you on a path for a certain discipline to bring you up in some way that you were weak in previously. Um, huh. There's, I don't know. I get a lot of advice, I guess. Um, I mean, I don't know. My little mantra has been recently is like, uh, and it has nothing to do with photography, but it's like, um, two ears, one mouth. Um, do twice as much listening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and this, uh, barbecue guy named John Wheeler <clears throat> said that to me in a, in a trailer. Um, in uh, Hammond, Louisiana and just kind of, he didn't say it to me. He said it to somebody in the trailer that was, was just talking and just kind of like joking. It was in a joking manner, but kind of just resonated with me like two years, one mouth. I was like, wow, like just kind of, you know, before, you know, I was <clears throat> really outspoken. I still kind of am really outspoken sometimes, but now I try to, now I try to listen more and, um, I guess work on my non-selfishness a little bit, you know, cause I'm pretty selfish. <laughs> sorry. Uh, but sorry, not sorry. I guess. <laughs> How would you aware of it? I mean, I'm aware that I'm, so, I mean, I don't know why, but I just am sometimes. Um, but yeah, you know, having, you know, just tears, one mouth. Um, the, you know, the trying to do, you know, something photography every day that came from my, my buddy, Craig Brumfeld. Mm. He, um, amazing coastal artist. Um, Very good artist. Uh, but you know, he told me one day, he's like, man, I try to do something with art every single day. And that dude, um, is one of the hardest working individuals I've ever seen in my entire life. He's mm -hmm. constantly, I mean, it's like, dude, how does this dude, like, wow. Like, it's just that, that man puts out so much work and is always constantly evolving and, you know, doesn't, you know, want to do the same thing, you know? So it's kind of hanging out with him and watching him work, you know, kind of. You know, I go home and I think about it and I'm like, you know, yeah, you know, that's, that's the right way to do it. You know, my buddy, William Colgan does the same thing. Hustles works. Yeah. I see great stuff from mm -hmm. him all the time, and, you know, and just not so much advice as just watching, you know, people that I feel are, you know, in way better in their profession than I am, you mm -hmm. know, and kind of just growing to, <clears throat> you know, just to, you know, watch them, you know, and just, if you don't surround yourself with people better than you, then you're, you're really screwing up. You know, you have mm -hmm. to be, you have to be aware and, you know, it helps when, you know, they're good people too, you mm -hmm. know, real, real genuine folks. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's the best advice, I guess is, you know, I don't know, man. No. Weird. Yeah, no, I get you. Uh, cause you can get snagged up on that. You can, you can go, Oh, I'm, I'm the artist, man. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, what I'm producing is really just, it's really out there and it's really the top notch. And then yeah. you'll isolate yourself. You'll end up isolating yourself and you'll never learn from any of the other people that have things to offer. Yeah. You know, you'll put I mean, yourself in that, in a bubble or something like that. Another one is like having to do with, uh, it was, I read it in a book. It was like creativity having to do with creativity, like people that don't ever share their ideas, you know, don't ever do anything, you know, cause you kind of get, like you say, just, you just get complacent, you know, it's like mm -hmm. you're doing the same thing over and over and over, you know, and, you know, I'm a, fr I mean, you can tell people like, I'm not afraid of telling people how I make something look like that or what I had my camera settings at, or, mm -hmm. you know, how I edited it or whatever, because at the end of the day, you know, like, you know, like, you know, she can tell me how she does the, you know, those, 
this fish carcasses, you know, and <laughs> this is what I do. This is my process, blah, blah, blah. At the end of the day though, I still have to take that information and put it on there. And mm -hmm. I'm pretty positive that it's not going to look the same, mm -hmm. you know, um, maybe it might, I don't know who knows, but, um, you know, it's, that's a really good thing too, is, you know, don't be afraid to tell people your secrets. Mm -hmm. I mean, whatever. I Which mean, is a big fear, especially of mine. I mean, like oh work wise, I mean, you, you got to keep secrets, but you know, your work wise stuff, like if you're in the creative industry, you know, you're never going to innovate if you stay making, stay drawing straight lines. Mm -hmm. zigzag it a little bit mm -hmm. I don't know step out of your comfort zone yeah yeah I feel like way too many people in our society are caught up in regular work and which I understand you know people got to make ends meets they got to pay bills they got kids they got to commute they're trying to be healthy they need to exercise too much sugar ah and it's just everything that we got to micromanage in our adult life uh, that's just more and more responsibility builds up and you know, and you, it, people, uh, their downtime instead of becoming uh, or, or, or drawing something, creating something or doing an artistic hobby or something like that becomes, you know, binge watching Netflix or, um, you know, just watching the sports games and all this kind of stuff, which, you know, I get it. People want escape, escapism. They want a reality other than their own. You know, and that's why, like, I'm dumbfounded of how reality television <laughs> series can be so popular and so, like, like you know, they've got the biggest advertising spaces and all this stuff. It just goes to the point that that's what people are consuming in mass, mm -hmm. and uh, it just, to, for me, it just doesn't. It's not a good look for us. You didn't watch <laughs> Keeping Up with the Kardashians? I've never seen it. I've, I've watched I've, every single I episode. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and this is why I watch stupid reality television like that because it's so stupid. It's just so dumb. It's like, I don't know. I usually won't fall asleep anyway, you know, but it's just kind of like dumbs it down just to, there's nothing to think about. You just kind of, yeah. I mean, and they portray it as reality. Too, hot. You, and you know, it's scripted. Like, so, I mean, is it scripted? I mean, so much of it. Scott scripted? Disick. That, I follow him on Instagram. That's interesting. Who's that? Scott Disick. He's one of the, he's, I, I don't know. He, who was he? Chloe Kim. No, it's not Courtney. Kim. Courtney. No, yep. Courtney. Yep. It's Courtney's her man. Husband. It's her baby daddy. Okay. Uh, coincidentally, he's the only white dude out of all of them. Mm -hmm. What are, what are the rest of them? They're all black guys. Oh, okay. That have gone crazy. But they're all Kanye. White. Kanye, yep. Kanye, they're they're uh, Armenian, actually. I think white. Yeah. yeah. But uh, like Kanye went crazy. Yeah. Um, what's his name? Uh, Courtney's no, Chloe's. Lamar. And Lamar Odom went crazy too. Okay. So there's something. <laughs> Oh, what's what's his name? Her name? Uh, Bruce. Bruce. What's her name now? No. Uh, Courtney. Caitlin. 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 Yeah. Thought you watched the show. <laughs> I can't. It's been a while. <laughs> I mean, it has. It's been like a year, probably. Yeah. I haven't. I haven't watched any new ones in a while. I mean, I just I'll binge watch them and I'm done. Yeah. That's it. It's over. I'm not gonna watch it again. No, the Kardashians. They've been in the public eye for like what over five years now. Mm -hmm. as like a thing. Yeah. And see, I I'm so ignorant on on all that stuff. I thought the Kardashians were black. Uh, like up until like just recently, <laughs> like a girl had to tell me, like. And I was like, what? You're like, you know, they're all they're white. Yeah. Like, oh. oh. Well, I love I the know. breaking the barriers of race, me yeah. personally. Because yeah. I just think that that's just something else that keeps us separated. Yeah. True. There's race. And we should see each other as the souls and individuals. Yeah, everybody's the same. Each person yeah. is. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. And that partners. gets, that gets thrown around for, for various reasons too. Yeah, it is something to move to move past on. Most definitely, that and even religion, even you know, mm -hmm. it's the same thing. You know, it's like, oh, mm -hmm. you know, I'm better than you, this and that. But it's like I think religions connecting run on... the bridges. Yeah, you know, especially if it's something that makes somebody a better human. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's um, religions. I think they can run it on scripts just as much as reality television will run on a script. Reality, you know? man, I can't wait to see me cash me outside. 
No sex yeah, for those who don't know that, is that a confirmed thing? Is that really coming to uh, be? It was on TMZ. Or okay, yeah. Uh, and, Cash and, me outside and, might get her own. And, show. and only and just just for the record, I do not follow TMZ. I do not follow any media on the on Facebook or the internet at all. Really, and None? the media director. Media. I know. I'm talking like CNN, Fox, BBC. Gotcha. WikiLeaks, like that kind of shit. Yeah. Like, yeah, news media, whatever. Um, I don't really. I used to keep up with it. Now I'm like, I'm just so tired of hearing. It's a little that. overwhelming. It's but all the freaking negative down. shit. Nobody ever, nobody ever talks about positive stuff going on. It brings on. you down. It's yeah. like, okay, fucking Donald Trump did this with Russia. Okay, Hillary Clinton's emails. Okay, uh, I think it's good yeah. to keep up. Bernie with Sanders what's going is screaming in the, in the corner. Okay, yeah. um, you can you can hit the headlines and kind of go, but it's all right, not but like at the end line, zoom you. yeah. And if you, and that's what happens. It shocks people will get so wrapped up and they're like, did you hear the story? I'm like, wait a year, bitch, wait yeah, a year. Depressing. Come and talk to me about that in a year. You're not. Cause generally it's not, it's not a big deal. They just, exactly. they run a script because if you go to their website, they have advertising space. It's money. It's, mm -hmm. it's numbers. So yep. they'll, they'll do these things. They'll, they'll like, play to a race audience or they'll talk um, about against a political figure or they'll mm. create this bad news because negativity draws people in who they can, feed off of it who it can't so true yeah it's they like, want it i'm kind of love and positivity does the same thing you mm. know it really does oh. but it's just i don't know if it's like people's pain bodies that are addicted it's addictive yeah mm. i yeah. um i'm really really disappointed in myself that i couldn't build a website that just trolled people all day and made a crap load of money <laughs> I mean, all these fake news sites, it's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, because it's like, you know, your fake uncle that's a crazy Donald Trump fan, you know, it's like, you know, that believes that Obama still <laughs> doesn't have a birth certificate. You know, you just post yeah. some stupid. Or the Antichrist. Yeah. Remember when people were saying, mm -hmm. it's, and then it's like the National Enquirer, though, now. Yeah. Basically. You know, I wish I would have come up with a National Enquirer thing. We'd be sitting on the G5 right now. Yeah. <laughs> How'd you get rich? Bunch of fake news. Yeah. Now you can't do it anymore. Yeah. There's going to be some rules about and that. And that's why but we're changing the counterculture. I think, I mean, it's, I think that that's a huge friggin' deal now. It's like all that crap. And then plus now you have kids that are, don't like we, and we can understand and identify the difference between, you know, real stuff and well, maybe, but like, imagine like a little like 14 year old, 15 year old kid. You know, like, what's it going to be like when they're older? People are so disconnected. No. Are they? Are they connected? Super connected. Too right, connected. Right. Okay. There's two ways to Too connected. That. My daughter was telling me that there's like little <laughs> symbols and hand gestures that they use in pictures. What do you mean? Like covering their faces. Have you seen? What does that mean? Like that kids are doing that? Like three, yeah, it's just like three of them is like 666, you know? Okay. And like one of them, it's like if you do some little thing, it means like war and shit. And the other one means peace, like the way you turn your fingers, you know? And it's I guess, sign it, uh, yeah. So it's like little languages. And then apparently, like certain little gestures are like yearly, you know, like certain things. Whoa. It was, I mean, I don't know. I mean, that's what she was telling me. I was like, are you, she might have been pulling my leg, but I, she was like, she's like basically so you can tell when like a selfie was taken or something. What? Kind of sort of. Oh, that's. But they cool. have little, they, like little codes and stuff. And, I, and it was weird because <clears throat> I've noticed like, you know, other people, you know, like other kids on the internet. Cause I mean, I'm just on there all the time. So, you know, you see it and you'll see like little start looking like if you see, you know, like, <sighs> like skaters will do that shit, you know, and they all they'll cover their face or their eyes. You know, it's weird. The little this picture was taken then. You can't mm, see anything that's in the like shot. Things, yeah. yeah, I guess yeah. you you know. But that'd be really cool to find, like like a hundred years down the road. Like if like society just had like an apocalypse or whatever, and people mm -hmm. started coming together to figure out what happened, and there's like all this old material left over of just like people People's that hands and stuff. Yeah, and they they tried to decode it as a language or something. It, you know? I mean, everything's changing, even like speech and stuff spelling and stuff like when are we gonna let you let it go and be like it's okay to write txt in a letter what does that mean txt text oh text <laughs> okay i mean you know like why is it such a big deal 
Yeah. I, I mean, mean we, just adapt and let's roll. You can get faster. Yeah. I you mean, can we, write that letter faster. We could, it's we like could. Deciphering it. We can, I mean, you can we make symbols. It later. L, I mean, come on. LOL. LOL. Exactly. OMG. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Languages is, is just a thing we agree on as well. So things can change. Like me and my grandma, I love her to death, but we get in these really fantastic arguments. <laughs> like we were both playing both sides and I, I more do it just because like, you know, I'm coming from my age with my technology. Whereas like, she's like no internet, <laughs> no, like the news at six o'clock and like, you know, we're just going to keep this kosher or whatever. And, uh, she's, she doesn't understand hashtag. She's like, hashtag is a symbol. It's, it's a numerical thing. Like, where did this come from where people could just start hashtagging things and all? And I'm like, well, you that's what the society has now accepting. They're accepting this idea. It originated with Twitter yeah. that you're making these subcategories of things to make it more easy and accessible or to make an, a, an additional statement as if it were a PS, a postscript. Mm -hmm. um, and she just won't have it because her hashtags aren't the same as our hashtags. But I'm like, th well, this is where language is changing. Yeah. And if we want to go from... Uh, laughing out loud to lol or just making lol. <laughs> making symbols Roful. <laughs> <laughs> making symbols just to like I mean look at Asian cultures like ancient cultures that can can convey a great deal of information just from a couple of symbols you know yeah you know who's to say that's not a more effective form of communication uh, if you haven't seen the arrival by the way fantastic alien sci-fi movie and great cinematography as well. Aliens. Guy who did Sicario. But the aliens, they're very alien. And the movie is all about decoding their language. And they use symbols, but the symbols are like, I don't want to give it away, but it's like, it's got embedded material. And they have to like, they have this language specialist and the psychologist who are like trying to figure it out. And they're trying to both learn their language to figure out why they're there, how they get there and what they want. Yeah. It's a really interesting movie. I liked it a lot. I'm pretty interested to see when we're going to get to see the aliens. They're going to yeah. finally come and visit. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Maybe. Could already be here and we just not aware of it. I mean, I want to have the capacity to, like, if there's dimensions that they operate in that are close to our reality, but I don't know. Yeah. Are we going to do something stupid like try to shoot a missile at them? <clears throat> yeah, technically. Like, like, Bill, pa like Bill Pullman and this is our Independence Day. Yeah. If they're coming to our world, we're in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Our if they're anything like us, we're probably in trouble because society, history has shown over and over again that whenever one group shows up, it always goes to whoever. whoever. I mean, very rarely is uh, mm. does it get along well. I, you would, know? I would not like our utopia to be messed up. They just found seven new planets so in a new oh, yeah. universe. Mm, amazing. Yeah. All habitable. Yeah. It's like Avatar stuff. Sweet. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? That'd be so... Um, SpaceX is taking people to space to the moon next year, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Elon Musk, that dude's probably the... He's going to be opinion. one of the guy on the council. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That dude's him. He's the... He's probably doing the most awesome stuff on this planet. Right Have now. you seen his solar power panels that he's mm -hmm. doing as shingles? Yeah. Where yeah. you can like drop a kettlebell on them and they mm -hmm. don't break. Yeah. And... You know, and supposed to be cheaper and more durable than. But are uh, they ever going to go into production? They're supposed to this summer. Really? I, I know he has that battery for the, you know. Which battery? What you of? charge your house on it, it'll mm -hmm. run for like however many um, years or something. It's like 10 grand, I think, for the battery. Oh, wow. But eventually it ends up paying itself. But yeah, the solar panels, Elon Musk, he's a. Amazing. I can't even fathom being that intelligent. Mm -hmm. It's probably insane mm -hmm. to be in that dude's brain. Yeah. Weird. And that's what we need is more people in those spaces, I feel like. Yeah. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta open up that... Gotta open up that third eye. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I mean, it'd, be, it'd be interesting to talk to those folks and talk about that kind of stuff you know like that kind of spiritual stuff because you know mm -hmm. they got to think about 
but I would assume that they're very spiritual people mm -hmm. or very, very disciplined yeah. in meditation or consciousness awareness, mm -hmm. practicing, uh, good ethics and, mm -hmm. and learning the, uh, the given, mm -hmm. give and take, you know, the balance that you got to give a little bit to receive. Yeah. But you're and worthy I, to receive. Yeah. That's a big one. Yeah. And I feel like we've got a lot of CEOs and stuff like that, that are leading operations where, um, like Mark Zuckerberg could be a good example. You know, he's incredibly wealthy, but he gives 99% of his Facebook profits away or him and his wife who they gave what billions to the, for the, for the goal of in the next century of eradicating all diseases and, and needs for medicine and things like that. Bill Gates is a big one too. Yeah. 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 But at that point it's like, Hmm, they start buying influence. But yeah. But, it's a cynical world. But who knows? They may be the ones that get things moving in a different direction, putting the people back in the hands. Because, I mean, you, you look at things like um, the Internet or uh, things like Uber or SpaceX, commercial travel to space. Um, it's kind of taking things that used to be, you know, more organized and, and business leveled and it's putting it more into the hands of the people. Um, and I'll use that to segue into a question of, of, of what, what it would take for, for people at large, our society to go back into what I like to call like a golden age of art. Mm -hmm. Like how, how do we get to that point to where, because we, we don't need to be worrying about our education. We shouldn't have to worry about war or feeding people. Like we need to, the goal is like, we need to get that under control, right? Our population and all that stuff so that we can take the time to become more internal and produce artworks, you know, like the time of the Romans or the Greeks, you know, of, of when they had their golden age of, of philosophy mm -hmm. and, and all that kind of stuff. I mean... Don't you feel like, I guess, I don't, I don't really have to phrase it as a question because, I mean, we're, we've been talking about it yeah. the whole time. Don't you feel like that's, like, we need to get a... We're stuck in a rut. Yeah, yeah. Like, we need to figure out how to get, circumnavigate all that kind of stuff so that we can have that stuff so we're... Like a um, rebirth. Yeah. And then it can trickle down to the way our economy is set up. You know, maybe it's not all about this money because that seems to be what we're wrapped in and is money and power. And that's what everybody hustles for primarily. Yeah. But if we could, if we could sustain to where we didn't actually need money and we, we brought less emphasis to the material desires that we could, um, we could automate a lot of processes with our technology. We could have buildings build other buildings. We could have machines that take care of themselves and repair themselves and, and you know, use supercomputers to make judgments that uh, humans couldn't make, you know, in their entire life just in the blink of a second with a supercomputer, you know? I think at that point, that's where that's kind of, that's given like, that's giving the, um, that's giving the machine the upper hand right there. Is it though? I mean, because I mean, you you still program machines though. You you create parameters within which they operate. But if they're building each other, then eventually they'll start to learn. Maybe N unless you Maybe. make their programs, uh, you board them in. You know, which yeah. I don't know anything <laughs> about board. <laughs> you know, I I know what you mean because we're kind of we're leaving that in the hands of other people to establish. Same that. thing with drones. Like I don't really. Yeah, like drones delivering food and stuff. I'm kind of like, once we open, we have to be really, really, really careful mm -hmm. opening that. Imagine because there's going to be one day we're going to look up and it's just going to be drones all up in the air. I mean, look what they did with Lady Gaga. What did they do? With you, the Super Bowl. No, the, the the background was all drones. Oh, Lit really? up drones. It was sick. Really, it was like moving. Like it was like an LED show in the sky. Yeah, and there were all drones, wow. all of them. Whoa. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. Like it was pretty much. Have you you know you've been to the Gulfport Christmas thing? Uh -huh. It was like that with drones in the sky, wow. like all just like floating up there, like perfectly, which is amazing. I think it was great, but eventually we're gonna look up and it'll be just drones everywhere. Mm -hmm. Too mad, and they're so small. And then you know, just kind of like arming those things. You know, was, yeah. You'll be running down the street. You have a parking ticket you forgot to pay, and wham, you're gonna get zapped with a with a net, <laughs> picked up and taken to <laughs> take it to Jackson County Processing. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I pay all my parking tickets on time. Yeah. No, no, yeah, I do pay them on time. Actually, yeah, I do. 
I don't have any parking violations. Are you uh, are you for automated driving? Is it, or is that scary? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I, I feel like I'm for it. Too. I'm for it too. I mean, the problem with that is having to deal with people that are going to refuse to have an automated car. And at the same time, though, you know, it's a double edged sword. What if you know they just want to hack your car and you just drive into a tree? That is scary. There wasn't there one. There's been like one or two rumors I know in the past where people have died in those kind of cars. Well, the one guy was watching a movie in his Tesla, and it something that it was right when the Tesla S came out and was driving itself, and it crashed and killed him. Mm-hmm. He did like an Instagram video or something, and right after that, he died. Wow. Well. But I mean, that was just like a, I mean, that's, I guess to be expected. It's not, it's not supposed to happen, but I mean, if it's the first line of driver self cars and we kind of got to wait for those bugs to come out. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's kind of scary. I mean, if your car is connected to the internet, it's pretty scary. Like I want to know like how, like, like how good is the security on that car? <clears throat> like, I mean, how hard is it for me to get into? I think it all boils down to trust. I mean, you got, I mean, it sounds like, I mean, it is trust, but you got all those little, you want to trust a car. It's like, when's the, when's the internet going to like crash? I'm waiting for that one to happen. Cause it's going to happen. I'm sure. Think so. I don't know. Or something, something seriously disrupted. Wouldn't take much. I mean, it won't take much. Amazon just went down. I, was, just, I just read about that recently. I didn't yeah. know anything about it till today. And it was one, it was like one, one third. third. Yeah. yeah. It was a little, it was like a typo. That's what caused all that. Really? But and that just goes to show you how dumb computers are. Yeah. You couldn't figure out that, hey, it's over. Did the person make it, the typo it, it, or it, the computer make no, the typo? No, the person made the typo. Oh, okay. But the computer didn't know what to do because of that typo. It's yeah. like the I before E thing. That's probably what it was. <laughs> receive. Misspelled receive. There you go. <laughs> Shut down Amazon. Yeah. But yeah, and a lot of other a lot mm, of other stuff. Yeah, I mean that's gonna I mean that's gonna be I'm I'm so intrigued by the internet. I could talk all day. I know. Yeah. I'm a dork about the internet. Yeah. It's, it could, it could be the thing that changes a lot of, I think about like the implications for future education with the internet. I mean, you know, uh, I've harped about this so much, but just the idea that we could get computer chips small enough to fit in our body and just think a thought and it connected to the internet produces the answer for us simultaneously. I mean, you wouldn't have to go to school, you know, kids would say, this is start saving us time. You know, people wouldn't have to go to, you know, for school for years to learn information. It's just like libraries are just stored in your brain, you know, of whatever, whatever you want to know, you know, and there's going to be, you're going to have to make the decision. Like, do you want to, do you want to be the person with the chip? That's, that's where, that's what I tell my grandma. That's where I'm going to be when I'm your age. You're worried about, should I get on the internet? I'm going to worry about, should I be the internet? Yeah. You know, or am I going to be like, oh, you crazy kids, you know, in your, your internet brains. Do you cross that? Do you cross that line? I mean, that's, that's one of those tough pills. That's going to, that would be so amazing. (laughs) Do I get plugged in or not? Yeah. It would be like the new social network. Mm-hmm. With that, I mean, I, I would think I would have to at my at that age, if given the opportunity to plug in and be, able, I would just I would say no. Mm-hmm. I'd say um, I'm going to stick with my 20th century body. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not upgrading to a Fred 2.0. Who knows though? <laughs> but if it could like prolong you, like I think that you know we'll. All of us here probably live, unless, you know, something catastrophic mm-hmm. happens, we'll probably live to be at least 100 years old. I feel that way, too. I mean, they've already Even been longer, doing, probably. doing studies where they're repairing the ends of the telomeres mm-hmm. at the ends of chromosomes of the mice and stuff like yeah. that, and they get healthier or younger and things like that. That's going to be the tough one. Like, we'll get, there's going to be, I think there's going to come a time where people are going to have to decide, like, the, it'll, the market will arrive as something really young and expensive as it usually is before Mm -hmm. it trickles down over the years but i mean can you imagine being the 80 year old with you know whose health is failing and then this stuff becomes available to the public but it's so expensive that you have to decide Mm -hmm. if you're going to give pretty much everything you have is just like you know regular regular joe retired guy from this job you know and and are you going to put it all in so that you can live longer or do you live out the rest of your life and then what if the complic what if there are complications you know that's another thing that will be well, I mean, it's going to be all micro medicine anyway. Micro medicine, yeah. Yeah, I mean, 
customized. It's going to be so insane. Yeah. I don't know that we've, but back to the whole dark ages thing of art and stuff. Like I was funny that you're talking about the economy because I read a, there was a thing in like New York times or something, but it was about <clears throat> basically the same thing that the reason our economy is sucking right now is because we haven't created anything awesome. Mm. And it was like cars and stuff like back in the fifties, you know, how cars were cool looking, you know, it's like for the past, you know, 30 years the cars have kind of pretty much stayed the same there hasn't been anything like revolutionary with the cars all our houses are looking the same everything's just kind of mundane you know nothing's brand new and shiny I mean I don't know what the next thing is you know TVs maybe TVs I mean this I mean well Phillips has that they did that thing at whatever CES where it's so substituted as a window mm. you turn it on and you just you see the image mm. and then you freaking turn it off and it's the window again yeah it's crazy well that seems to be kind of where we're moving i mean we want we're getting vr we're getting bigger screens it's getting more more real i mean it's going to get holographic getting, yeah holograms right here this um, is fake um, Google glasses, you know, they tried to do their thing. You know, we want projections visualized. Uh, my Mazda has a hologram thing that pops up and shows your, your miles per hour. People are just what? wearable technology and all this kind of stuff. People are just trying to get more integrated. It's trying to get in us. And if we took this approach of having technology installed in us, I mean, we could potentially... Uh, there's an episode of Black Mirror uh, mm. where they have it embedded in their eye and they can play back memories and you know all this kind of stuff. I mean, we could we could be watching one thing here and like just kind of just you know, that'll be the new it? texting and driving. Like, don't watch your you know your in, don't watch TV when you're driving like through your consciousness or whatever's projecting. You know, um, that's so crazy. I mean, that's a lot much. It is. Well, I mean, it's too much. It's it is. Well, they are. Well, Sony has that patent where you can take pictures of the contact. Um, I mean, that's oh, like wow. yeah. yeah. One of your questions was that like um, was about uh, you're like photography. Like, what excites me? Um, you know, like Snapchat with their glasses now, the snap goggles, snap whatever they're called. But you can buy. They basically put filters on people's faces. I think. And you can take pictures and stuff and snap with your eyeball. I think that's pretty cool. Like when is, <clears throat> you know, if I can put a contact in my, you know, eye mm -hmm. and just kind of tell it to zap. But you you know, know, like versus a text, I'd prefer to receive a letter in the mail from somebody because I know how much time and effort and thought it actually took to d take that action versus a quick fix or a text or a call. I, I love you. I love you written on an iPhone means the same as I love you written on a letter. No, it speaks completely different volumes. Why? Because they took the time to write it. I mean, I you guess because there's phone more touch. in your hand that's vibrating at this, uh, well, toxic frequency actually with the radiation coming from it. Mm -hmm. And then you have this handwritten letter that's infused with love and caring and you're holding them both in your hand. Uh, Big difference. Yeah. You got a style to the like writing. A you got a yeah, style to the writing. And keep it on your fridge. I, know. I, was, you know, just I was just kidding. I was just kidding. Kidding. There's kidding. a process to it. I'm not I taking just, it back. I was just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I meant to sound like an idiot. I I just you sound like an idiot. I did. I'm like, opinion. No, I mean no. That's pretty stupid. I mean that's that's very. Anybody that says that there's the same amount of meaning in a text message as there is in a written freaking letter is a fucking idiot. Because a written because trade. nobody it's because nobody does nobody does, does letters it. anymore. Exactly. That's, That's why, why it's, it's special. So special. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's special. It was that special. Bic I think it's that the simple things and connecting with people face to face, you know, and being FaceTime. open and present because it's like people are FaceTime. trying to online date, but it's like instead of being that, why don't you just be present where you are instead of stuck on your phone? And you know, Miss Wright might be sitting right there beside you, but you don't, you're missing out because you're in your phone. Mm -hmm. So it's like just be present. Mm -hmm. I feel like life's okay. opportunities are way more fulfilling than being stuck on a computer. Mm -hmm. Man, that computer is a doorway to the world. Ugh. It is. <laughs> I can't. I can't knock it. I mean, kind of. Yeah, I mean, kind of going back to what we're talking about. There's some sort of balance in it all. I yeah. mean, yeah. humans wouldn't. We we birthed the internet. We birthed this technology. So we want it. Our consciousness wants it to come forth. Maybe we're wrong about it. Maybe we don't know what we're doing. Maybe we could. We we end our own species with with the path that we've taken. But as long as it's in play, there's I've got to think that there's some sort of balance to be had here. And, you know, 
I don't know. Oh, yeah. Life is definitely about a balance. balance. You know, because we talk about, you know, being in the moment and all this kind of stuff. But the reality is, is like uh, being the a kid being on his phone in that moment is it's the moment of what's happening for them. It's their it's their true, honest experience. I think it's pretty awesome, though, that <clears throat> as kids now that you can like record everything. Yeah. Like you can record your friend doing something really funny and stupid. Mm-hmm. You know, that like, you know, now, you know, like stuff that, you know, my friends did and stuff that we did, you know, as kids, like, it's just a memory in my brain. Mm-hmm. Whereas stuff like my daughter, you know, she has it like saved on her little device, you know, whatever they were doing. Mm-hmm. I think that's pretty crazy, I think. But yeah, it's all about balance for sure. Yeah. It all leads to balance. It all leads to yoga. <laughs> it all leads to yoga. <laughs> it's the best thing ever. I'm sorry. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's the best uh, exercise. Yeah. It's pretty dope. Mm-hmm. And people don't. do. I'm surprised the more guys don't do it. It's so retarded. Yeah, it's something around it's here. So it's something around here that... Um, I kind of wish I, I could in the future, if I have time, that I can take it further. Because uh, I was a mm-hmm. yoga instructor for a couple months at one point, just off street cred. You know? nice. Not, yeah, <laughs> wasn't not you know, official. Well, I didn't have because you know there's organizations that mm-hmm. have the you know you go in, you, yeah, you put the hundred or the three hundred hours in and all that kind, of, which I'd love to do. You can levitate. Mm-hmm. I would totally sign me up for three hundred hours of yoga, you know, <laughs> up in the mountain somewhere or whatever in California. But unfortunately, it's just not realistic within my time frame right now. But you know, that's that's something I would sure like to bring to this area more. Mm-hmm. is is uh at the very least awareness um you know i don't understand i mean it's total ignorance of where you would come from to be like this is a feminine or a, a um masculine. yeah it's not masculine enough or whatever like that but i mean as you talk about Man. opening up airways or, or or loosening up your body or just putting moving yourself in energy the, around like moving it's in, stuck yeah, yeah. and in that meditative state which mm-hmm. is just so blissful because it it's wonderful. And girls think it's hot when guys are in yoga class. I don't know why guys don't realize mm-hmm. that. Yeah, yeah. If they embrace it and they're doing it honestly. Yeah. And My yoga really... gets camouflaged. <laughs> See? Well, yeah. Finding a balance. That's it. <laughs> Fellas, get yourself some camo out. yoga pants and get in there. <laughs> Dude, I really want The some. bar is very low. Just do it. I looked up some traditional yoga pants, like the harem pants or whatever. Yeah. I want some so bad. Really? I want some so bad. Yeah. Like, it's, I want some really... Redi- I mean, they're like... I want some real ones. I don't want them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then just walk in there and be like, hey, guys. Check this out. <laughs> and then go work out afterwards. Yeah. In those pants and be like, look at this, dude. And they're like, what? Yeah. I got my freaking flying rug over here, too. <laughs> magic carpet mm. um when, when i was in india one of the things that happened is like their money system like the same day as our election just uh overnight the prime minister came out and said we're stopping all 500 and 1000 ruby currency bills as acceptable forms of currency which is a major currency for mm-hmm. in, for indians and uh they just did it overnight to combat like uh lots of um counterfeiting and and people were hoarding money you know like as they say keeping it under the mattresses mm-hmm. so they were like you got to bring all the bills that you got and we're going to tax you on those bills and then we're going to give you the new currency so this was all going on so this happened to us like you know I'm, it was like my fourth day there same day that you know wake up trump's winning and then we see this money thing and we're like what is going on the world's over so i didn't come back with much of anything like money to all of a sudden became this like now we were like just trying to stay afloat or whatever uh, which made the trip a lot more interesting. But one of the things that I did bring back is uh, this girl asked me to go to an Indian wedding with her. Mm. Uh, and so I bought this thing and it's got, it's like a traditional Indian garb. Beautiful. Yeah. And it's got the, um, uh, the pants, yeah. you know, do you have the Latin shoes too? I bought, I got some yes, shoes. I got some shoes. And, uh, I, when I was in Durham, Sal, I got some prayer beads and I had a Buddhist monk bless them. Yeah. How so, beautiful. so I was like rocking this thing and looking I felt like so I was in. 
I felt like I was. I looked like ridiculous, but um, there's this beautiful dissolution or, or, or uh, dissolving of boundaries when you go travel and you're just in a place where you may never be again and nobody knows who you are and you can go and do anything and there's no time. And so I was like, whatever, you know, I'll rock it. Uh, but yeah, those pants, man, right. uh, you could do yoga. But and I sometimes I want to take that outfit out just on a weekday, like on you Sunday, and just walking should. around smoking a pipe, you know, for you know? sure. <laughs> Definitely. On a Sunday. Yeah, yeah. So good. Mm -hmm. Where to the grocery store? I would. You know, have guests, you know, somebody shows up like the mailman and I just answer it like <laughs> real slow and call me. If I could get like a, I don't know, like a, some exotic animal or something like a, like a <laughs> big lizard on my shoulder. <laughs> You're like, hey. Yeah. These are, these are native to Sri Lanka. Did you know 80% of the world's cinnamon comes from Sri Lanka? I'm just bringing you this package, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. It's my organic av avocados. <laughs> There's this great picture. I wish I could find it, but it, like, I, it, I don't know. It resonated with me so much for, in a way, but like, there's this dude and he's wearing like this like hippie yoga kind of, he looks like a guy like who just came out of yoga class or like would like advocate yoga to you real hard. But it's like, uh, it's like him doing like this and like that. And it, the caption is, uh, when you smash all seven of her chakras, eat all her avocados, and then never call her again because cell phones cause cancer. <laughs> and this guy looks just so hipster, but he's like throwing up like the kids' signs or whatever. I don't know. Maybe there's some of the signs that uh, I don't Got know. Got to decipher them. Yeah, yeah. But send me that picture. I'll be like. <laughs> Mason, what's this all about? Yeah, I was about to say, ask your daughter. She'd what what is he saying right here? It's <laughs> mm. funny. Well, guys, uh, I was wondering if uh, if we could wrap it up maybe with uh, a news article that is actually about the Sistine Chapel that I saw uh, in in the news. That's sweet. This past weekend, did y'all hear about uh, the? They just did like a total photographic. Uh, capture of it. Yeah. And they've... Uh, I didn't pay attention though. Oh, uh, really? No, I didn't read. I, like I said, I kind of like heard it in passing. I don't do news, really. Uh, it's a, It was a five-year project uh, in the ceiling at the Vatican, uh, shot in 270,000 digital frames. Um, so they had it's this just really... the biggest picture or something like that. Is it's that the picture? Isn't it the biggest photo ever taken... I saw something recently about that. I don't it know if it is. Could possibly be one. They're they're only made. I think from what I understand now, like one thousand nine hundred ninety nine existing copies. I don't know why they didn't do two thousand, but it, it two thousand that was the year Jesus was born. I know. I thought I figured they could. They was would, it? I just made that up. If you, I just kind of well, I mean, up. people they Jesus two thousand years ago. People just usually default to two thousand. Generally, yeah, but 1,999. If you flip those nines upside down, sixes, sixes, six is six is a number of eternal love, is it? Yeah, in numerology, hmm. there's always thought, a different perspective six, six, than what the you know, we're bred to think, the number yeah, like, six thinks, yeah, yeah oh, it's evil, it's but this has to do, no, but this has to do with or like the swastika sticker, like the Hindus use that. Same but, but, symbol for peace and love and yeah, prosperity. Yeah, it's just what, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Confederate flag. Heritage. I'm still going to go with con, uh, <laughs> conspiracy theory and say the Vatican secretly. That, that's their Easter egg for this particular project. It's Maybe like it six, is. Six, six. Yeah, Maybe what if Michelangelo really was all about it? And he's just kind of hiding it. Yeah. It's but like, he didn't do anything. Like Jimmy like Page from Led Zeppelin, you know, he used to always do like weird... Dark, he they do dark arts and stuff like that. I think mm -hmm. I don't know, talk to ghosts, ask Peter, I don't know, uh. but who knows? Who knows what freaky stuff's going on at the Vatican? That's weird, but, yeah. They're, they they do some, there's some, some that'd be that'd be a good place to be invisible, yeah, yeah, be a good place to be invisible, also at like uh, like the Masons, mm -hmm. what do they do, or like some of those secret societies, like Illuminati. Mm -hmm. Get the mm -hmm. lowdown on that Pizzagate stuff that's going on. What's going on with that? I don't know. Speaking of pizza, I saw this today this morning. Pizza Hut is releasing shoes that you can order pizza from. They have shoes? a button. Yep. They're releasing them um, with March Madness. You can, and I would recommend, I mean, I probably don't even have the cash to buy these pizza shoes, but they're like limited edition Pizza Hut tennis shoes. 
And like, remember the pump? You don't probably don't remember no. the pump. Nope, don't remember the pump. Show my age again. Oh yeah, I do. I do. And the tennis shoe. Yep. Michael Jordan was that what it was? That pump tip? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I do remember those. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's it's the same. The 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 button to order your pizzas right there. That's wow. crazy. That's pretty sick. I'd like to say something about my inspiration too. Uh-huh. Um, and this is kind of off topic, but we're talking about pizza. <laughs> I know, yeah. Let's talk about art. Tell us about how pizza inspires you. No, pizza, I love pizza. <laughs> you know, um, I was going to talk about inspiration, like to, um, on my mural, and like you were asking earlier about like what inspires us, and for me, it's. Um, <sighs> I'll say, like, for this mural that I'm doing down here, um, there's another artist, Nicholas Cook. And he came down there, and I was actually in a funk and didn't know what to do with myself. I'm like, oh, I'm just feeling sorry for myself. Like, poor pitiful me. And next thing you know, my boy gets down there and puts that slow, throws his mural up on the wall and ends up painting my face on the wall. And it was such a shock. Like, I just couldn't believe it. And, And he... Um, he did it to inspire me, you know, and I can't tell you how much it did. He literally like, like handed me a hand, put it this way. He got so much like publicity and stuff off of it and all this light as he deserved because he did a beautiful job and he literally took that light and like shined it my way. Mm -hmm. And for me to see somebody so gracious and giving and selfless in their time of glory, you know, of Mm -hmm. like painting what they did and and not only that dedicating it was like enough you know what I mean it was such a beautiful experience and such a beautiful lesson to me of giving like truly giving selflessly Mm -hmm. you know and that is what inspired me to get my ass out the bed and go paint yeah yeah Mm -hmm. so people can do that for you too you know because it's like there's other things that inspire me in art, and I can talk about that all day, but like sometimes when you're in these places and you're stuck in these vibrations that you can't quite get out of, you know, some people can just like save you in that. They can hold space for you, hold a space of love for you, you know? Um, so yeah, I just wanted to add that in there for like me being inspired. Yeah. Yeah. That was beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Yeah. Let's roll that Sistine Chapel, though, real quick. You want to go back to the Sistine Chapel? Well, he didn't finish this. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no. That, I mean, that was pretty much uh, that was pretty much it. Um, yeah. Uh, so it's just going to be a reference point for whenever we go back. We'll know in 2017 that's exactly how it looked. And if they ever needed to study it, I mean, it's it's over 220 pages, and it's, it's on a, printed on a one-by-one scale. Um, so... Yeah, that's thought it was pretty cool. Did you guys hear about the Metropolitan Museum? Or, or no, not them, sorry. There was a guy, he's some French artist. Uh, you might actually know him, but uh, he's living inside a rock surrounded by, like, well, that's headline, that's gross. Surrounded by his own excrement. He's living in a rock, and he's hollowed out like a little a thing, and he's just in this museum, and they've encased him in it, and he's got enough room to like maneuver to like pee in bottles and like that kind of thing, and he's got like food, and he's trying to stay in there for a week, and it's a 20-ton rock. Uh, it's Abraham uh, Ponchabal. Uh-huh. Um, and he's <clears throat> trying to survive in there for a week. He's living in a rock. He's it's a rock, and like um, he has no idea like what day if it's day or night. Uh, his like sleep, he says, is real off. And people just come and talk to him through the rock. And he says it's really cool because like people come and they talk to the rock and they'll say things to it. And it's like, but he gets to hear it too. Like and they kind of, you know, it's really weird. Like that aspect of it. Uh, I hadn't heard about that. I hadn't either. Like yeah. the guy that um, wanted to get eaten by anaconda last what? year. Did what? Did you read about that? No. This dude, he um, he built this suit and put himself in the suit and he like got in a cage or whatever with an anaconda. It was on TV. And um, he, was, yeah, he was in an, an oxygen. Or, I'm sorry. <laughs> he had, he, yeah, his suit had oxygen and stuff. Um, but I mean, his, he was going to live in there, I guess, until the anaconda freaking took him out. What kind of suit? Like another snake suit? No, or? it was a um, shark suit. No, 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 no. It was like like plastic. Okay. Like or composites. Like this crazy. Oh. Like a whole. Like he was going to be swallowed whole. Was oh. He, was he, he started. Well, he he couldn't handle the pressure. Oof. Well, yeah, you're about to be eight months. Like, well, he got. And a bunch of people were mad because, 
you know, the snake. The, they're saying they messed him up, you know. But but yeah, he started to get eaten like the snake put its head over him. Yeah. It's crazy. Check it out. Ooh. Eaten by Anaconda. He, he failed miserably. Wow. It was on national television. I can't believe y'all missed it on NBC or CBS. Well, that sounds like right, kind of so. what this guy does because his next problem, if, if he survives this ordeal, as they word it, uh, he wants to spend a fortnight sewn up in, uh, or no, no, um, he has spent a fortnight sewn up inside a stuffed bear. Uh, but he, his next project is to become a human hen and hatch a dozen eggs by sitting on them for weeks on end. Um, and when he was a bear, when he was in the bear suit, he ate worms and beetles while living inside of it, uh, which they don't elaborate on why that is. It's like, go figure it out if you're really interested, which I am. Uh, but he crossed the Alps in a barrel. Um, and last year spent a week on top of a 20 meter pole outside of a Paris train station. So I think maybe he thinks he's David Blaine too, but I don't know. Just, That's serious mind power. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting character. Living inside a rock, huh? Yeah. I feel like that sometimes. It's probably. <laughs> I wonder if it's cold in there. I assume so. Or I mean, it might be warm. I mean, your body generating heat. I don't know, because I know if you if you like dig out earth, like if you you should look up uh, Michael Reynolds is his name, and he's an architect, and he has these things called earth ships, and he's got neighborhoods of them in in like Arizona somewhere or something like that. But like using tires, mounds of earth and tires, he'll like they pack them in and they stack them, and then he can use recycled can bottles and glasses uh, to. Uh, and just earth to create this thing you're like you don't need any cement you can but if you want but like once you build that and then he makes it all solar powered and there's rain um, things up top that catch the rain and filter through botanical gardens that filter through different chambers to make it drinkable and filter the water the same water you use for your your showers mm -hmm. is what it, you could drink or use to cook with or whatever and it's all running through this enclosed circuit so that you your, your utility bill is like maybe like a hundred bucks a year or something like that yeah. in grand total uh, but inside the the house, like not only is it uh, like fire resistant because it's earth and it's tire and all this kind of stuff, uh, but the temperature remains constant because it's within the earth. So I don't know, maybe the, if he's inside the rock that it, it would maintain the same kind of temperature or whatever. Probably. I would think it's a constant. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I don't know. Well, is that all she wrote? That's a wrap. Is that, is that it? A wrap? Snap. Yeah, we can call it a wrap. It's 10 12. Mm -hmm. I think we said we were going to get out of here around that time. So mm -hmm. cool. All right. We'll wrap it up. Perfect. Yeah. Well, um, guys, thank you so much for coming and, and uh, dropping knowledge on everybody. Um, let's give let's give some 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 places we can go to find out about your progress and what you're doing. What kind of stuff we got going on? Throw it out there. Social media, yep. websites, what you got? FredSalinas.com. Really, actually, um, <clears throat> FredOgraph228 on Instagram. I'm pretty active on Instagram. Right the on. most active social yep. network for me. Yep. I feel you. I'm there with you. Yeah. I, Facebook, just too much drama on that thing. Yeah. Facebook marketing platform now. Ugh. Just link it. Send your Instagram shit and it goes mm -hmm. right to Facebook. Bam. Uh, People that want to be there, they can get it too. Yeah. yeah, and I'm uh, Jerica Broussard, and I'm on Facebook, and then I'm Love Vitality on Instagram. You can find me there as well. Beautiful. Insta. Beautiful. Graham. And maybe we can get this podcast out in, in time. Can people, like, can they go down and watch you guys work when you're doing the yes, Fishbone Alley stuff? please come down and watch. Yeah, okay. I would love that. We're actually uh, planning on maybe doing an interactive community project, too, where people can come down and paint. Okay. Um, and y'all are starting this weekend, is that right? Yeah, I'm starting okay. this week. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yep. Sweet. Yeah, yeah, there's those guys like they go to Wani Festival and stuff. They're guys over there. Chris Vines, that dude's really cool. I think he's probably. Oh, they're awesome. Have you met Chris? Yeah, yes, probably, obviously. I have. He's fabulous. He's been doing a good job. Yes. And go for David it. Parker and Lloyd G -G. Yeah, there's some movers and some shakers down there. They're doing some great things for the community. Salt and pepper. Hell yeah! Right on. So get out there, folks, and check it out, and uh, support the art. Yes. Yeah. Let's, let's evolve our consciousness together. Yes. Don't put the chip in your brain. I, I wouldn't. I mean, have the tree instead. Uh, I might. That's a hard. Th it's hard to say no to. You know, if I didn't have to go to school, if I could just learn kung fu, just laying on on my sofa like eating Cheetos. Matrix. Exactly. Exactly. 
put it in my brain. I, I mean, might just take it. I might say, hey. It's chips you know? and Cheetos or goji berries and trees. Pick yep. your point. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> then if the internet crashes and it's in my body. It's, you're done. Yep. Then it's going to be left to you and you're going to have to go, well, I remember from the internet. I think this is how we did things. You know, we'll I see. Know. Send you into the woods and see how long you can send a, a tweet after that. You know, and all the, the phones and the internet dies. But no, we're going to get there. We're going to make it. We're going to make it, folks. We're going to survive. We're going to evolve. Uh, and I we're think gonna, so. Yeah. We'll create great things. Yeah. I'm excited to visit Mars. We'll get there. We'll get to art and somebody will we'll leave some sculptures and some pretty things. But, some sculptures in Mars. That'd be, that'd be kind of crazy. Throw them off real quick. Mm -hmm. People visit. Yep. Who so, knows? That'll be that'll be topic for next time. We'll get into space international or international space travel. Yeah. Yeah. You know, intergalactic, oh. that's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. You know what's really crazy? This is just off point. Mm -hmm. GoPro's picture of the day. Did you see that picture? No. With a freaking airplane them. in the middle. Mm -hmm. Remember the other picture with the airplane in the middle that was Nikon's yeah. uh, thing? <laughs> it was photoshopped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but this GoPro one doesn't even look like a damn GoPro. It's not even got the wide angle on it. It looks yeah. ridiculous, and this plane just looks massive. Yeah, but check it out. It's it's got a bunch of little social media. I've got two GoPros, and I'm almost tempted to like sell them. I w I bought them for this purpose, mm -hmm. but um, I need to get software and to just I don't know. I need to just do it. You know, make the video component. People love video. And another friend with a video mm. that likes to make it. Yeah. Mm. You know? Everybody. Yeah. Work with you. If I could get a Mac, which I will at some point. Manifesting skills. Plant that yep. seed. Water it. Invest. Invest. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, guys. Thanks again. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Coastalnoise.com. Go and, and follow all the good stuff and keep up. And uh, next time it'll be Mars. All right. Awesome. Later. Later.